You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob, and awesome indeed, Paul. You're listening, everybody, to episode number 423. And as always, we are grateful that you're here hanging with us. You know what? I'd be grateful uh, if Dano, our friend and Drony member, would send in a recording of how he answers the show. I think you missed it, but at the 107 class, yeah. I was saying, oh yeah, I'm so used to doing the podcast all the time, and then I just said the intro, and I was like, hey everyone, welcome to the, you know, that, what I said, and then Dano responded, and I'm Rob, and like went into it. It was just <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> so I would love oh. it if Dano would just send in a recording of his Rob impression, because it is quite funny. I would love to hear that, actually. Yeah. I would love to hear that. And I would actually love for Dano to maybe record our intro, just like, I don't know, maybe do the podcast number version part of it or something for us. He has one of the coolest DJ voices I think I've ever heard. You know, I feel like I've known Dano now for a while just interacting with him, but it's all been electronic, email, yeah, Facebook, and so I have not had a chance to talk to him, but anyways. Meeting him someday. at the 107 class was a blast, and then he was like, you know, his first business was event management and sound and, you know, all that. He I, seems like, sorry to cut you off, he just seems like a really, just a happy person. He is. He which is. Which I love. He'll be DJing my wedding, that's for sure. Nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he was like, here's my card, I know you're getting married soon. I was like, I'm so happy you hated this to be. <laughs> <laughs> so, Book it, Dano. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be like, all right, well, since you're the host of the show, that'll be $100,000. Right. <laughs> like, oh, well, uh, I guess I'll be looking for someone else. <laughs> and what kind of money, that would be yeah. the question. He did say Pesos? dollars. Pesos? Pesos, we Pesos? could work with that. You know, when I saw a bill from customs in Mexico, I almost freaked out and then I remembered it was pesos. Right. Yeah. So anyway, 1800 was like 90 bucks. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Let's get right into today's question brought to you by, we haven't recorded our advertisement yet for mm. them, but since I had to record 14 episodes, we're just doing this kind of ad hoc. So Thank you to Video Blocks. Uh, if you use stock footage for any of your videos that you produce, you may want to check out Video Blocks because you pay one low fee to use stock footage for the whole year. It's a pretty good deal. Check them out, videoblocks.com. Uh, today's question also brought to you by the drone you community whether you want in-person training you want to come out here and come to the field and fly the obstacle course or you want to learn from the best drone pilots around online or you want to learn how to get your certificate whatever it is you can do that at the drone you.com absolutely check it out and let us know how we can help you my name is patrick bryant and i send you greetings from beautiful athens alabama first i want to thank you for these episodes they are extremely helpful and well done. My question has to do with an episode titled, Any Barriers for Realtors Posting Drone Videos on Their Site? In that episode, you mentioned that there were several opportunities that were much more lucrative than making videos for real estate postings. I was hoping that you would share what some of those more lucrative opportunities are. Again, thank you for an excellent uh, service you're providing out here. Look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. You bet, Patrick, and thank you. And I have got to imagine Patrick's a happy camper, at least if he's an Alabama fan. Did you see what they did to USC? You probably didn't see that. Is did he an that? Alabama or a Georgia fan? Didn't he say Athens, well, Georgia? No, no, no. He said Athens, Alabama. Now, he could oh. be an Auburn fan. I don't know the geography well enough, so forgive me. If either you're way, actually an Auburn fan. Either way, let's be honest. If you're filming the cheerleaders with the drone, you're gonna be a happy man. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you don't, I suppose in that case, you don't care if it's Alabama or Auburn. But nonetheless, Alabama destroyed USC. I could not believe it. I haven't been watching football in five years because my mind is so full of tech information <laughs> and work and strategy and all that. Well, Honestly, I used to love watching football. Um, my family is a huge Virginia Tech family. Oh, that's I right. Mean, they Hokies all the way. I mean, they go to every game. Like, they're intense. Nice. Um, and I'm not a Hokie. So I went to <laughs> You're not a Hokie. Him. <laughs> oh, man. But you I just can, had to be the rebel. I did. We all know Paul's a rebel. No, I don't get a chance to watch a lot of football Go either, Lobos. but I didn't. Yeah, right. <laughs> woof, woof, woof. <laughs> hey, we've got more rushing yards than anyone else actually right now in the NCAA. 
That's great. Well, last one. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I'm proud to be a uh, Lobo. Anyways, um, woof, woof, woof. <laughs> yeah, so there are a lot of <laughs> lucrative opportunities. Filming and games is not one of them. Probably filming, not. You're not even allowed to film games, are you? No, that would yeah, not you're not be, flying over people. Not you're legal. not flying over stadiums. I know someone posted in the group the other day, like, I want to fly over my son's football game to get footage. It's like, unless you've got an Inspire One with the Zoom camera and you're not flying over people, it ain't happening. Right. Yeah, so, don't do it. Just don't even, don't even do it. We had, oh gosh, we had somebody write into us and, and share a video or something. I don't even remember. We get a lot of emails, as you can imagine, and it was somebody who was asking a question, and then I looked at the video, and that they were flying directly over people that were running in a race, just right oh, over no. along the entire race. Oh, no. I about cringed. Don't do that, guys. So let's talk about lucrative jobs, Rob. Let's do it. Uh, honestly, let's even just progress from real, real estate. We want to live the drone life. The book is coming out soon, Live in the Drone Life. And it's all about doing what? Flying really well, understanding the law, and living your dream. Right. And my interpretation of that is traveling around the world, mm -hmm. being able to experience new places, sure. being able to meet and experience new people, make memories for life, and just truly enjoy what I do right. while providing an awesome product. So for me, that's traveling. Yeah, no, and I, and I think that's probably true for a lot of people. However... There are people that get really excited about the industrial side of flying drones, be it for farms and some of the really cool things that you can do with drones for those folks, be it power line inspections. There actually are people that get excited about those things. There are, but I just want to say too, I'm basing what I'm about to say based off the assumption that you don't have 25 grand to spend on equipment to get started up. That's fair, and that's, that's actually a great premise to go by. So let's just premise this with... Uh, I've got five to ten k on a drone. Okay, all in or whatever that you got five to ten thousand of equipment. Um, if we're progressing from real estate, we want to progress further into land brokerages. Land brokerages are huge. Um, you're selling properties for millions of dollars, not thousands of dollars. So you've got a lot more budget. So those mm -hmm. are much more lucrative because you have to create uh, a lot larger production. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that's huge is. We've talked about it before, action sports, um, because it involves, you know, close proximity to people and it involves, um, you know, difficult but creative shots. It's also very lucrative. Right. Um, windmill inspections, albeit they don't take very long, can be extremely lucrative. Mm -hmm. um, so let's, you know, progressing further in real estate, let's talk about lodges. Let's talk about, you know, vacation homes. Let's talk about timeshares, you know, places where people go resorts. to travel. Resorts. Large resorts. Absolutely. I've made my name on lodges, resorts, and hotels. Yeah, no, I, you've created a very nice business in that realm. And I think one of the things people can do is think outside of the box. So when you're watching TV and you see a commercial... Or when you're online and you see certain types of advertisements, think about how using a drone could enhance that advertisement. And who knows what kind of ideas you'll come up with. For example, the whole boat thing and just how powerful drone footage is for selling really, really expensive boats. It's true. Um, I mean, I, I could think of if you're on the coast, maybe you're using your drone footage to present um, like a, a yacht club. Or different things like that. I mean, the sky's the limit. Totally. It really is in terms of how you can apply what you're referring to to all kinds of things. Totally, totally true. Um, you know, here's the thing, though. If you're going to go after these clients, if you see something on TV, buy a Freedom Journal. You can get them from Amazon, uh, Pat Flynn's book, and write down how many people you're going to call, when you're going to call them. Um, and in order to sell yourself, you've got to be able to visualize or your client has to be able to visualize what you're going to provide to them. Uh, so having a demo reel to say, Hey, look, I saw your competition is doing commercials. Uh, I think that we could create a mutually beneficial relationship. I can help you sell. Um, and then, you know, we, by you providing business to me, I, I'm really just accelerating your business. Mm -hmm. Uh, and by doing that, guess what? You are going to get business. It may take 10 tries, 20 tries, 100 tries. You're going to get business. And you've got to be willing to, to put yourself out there. You've got to be willing to show off yourself. And you've got to be willing to talk with confidence and conviction. Absolutely. And as I think about that, I think about you could just focus on a particular town. Let's take Santa Fe. There are a lot of high-end resorts in Santa Fe. 
some outside of the city limits, obviously some right in the city limits, but you could focus on just that one town and kind of go from resort to resort. Which is funny too, because if you just focus on towns that have higher levels of, um, let's say medium income or higher levels of medium home prices, Mm -hmm. uh, you're gonna get a lot more business in those areas that have more disposable income. You'd be surprised what old geriatric people with money will uh, spend it on. (laughs) No, seriously, I've had a guy call me and say, hey, I own a property in Oklahoma and uh, I'm not getting my oil payments as I'm supposed to. I can't get on the property. It's about a mile distance. I need you to fly over there and give me actual data on what's going on. Interesting. Is that are those wells actually pumping? Is kind mm-hmm. of what he's wondering. Mm-hmm. See, that is interesting. Uh, who would have thought? And so now we're talking about. We're talking um, twenty five hundred bucks to go drive to Oklahoma and fly so for twenty minutes. Covert and drive operations. Back. <laughs> In the private sector. That's and interesting. he was willing to pay five grand for it. Wow. Just literally for a 15-minute flight. And you said five no? Five grand. Um, this was before, you know, some 107 stuff. So gotcha. Okay. I, uh, I decided you to were, decline. You were flying low under the radar, which and, was good. And now uh, that guy lives next door to me, by the way, and he talks about it all the time. So I could take advantage of that opportunity at any time. Right now, as you know, I've got a lot going on with Drone U, about to go on vacation, not trying sure. to take on any new clients. So, um, But I think those are some great ways to go is lodging, big lodges, Hotels, mm-hmm. luxury resorts, destinations, uh, and don't be afraid to call marketing managers and get your name out there. It's so important. Yeah, absolutely. And so let's just talk really briefly. If you go above and beyond that resort, um, what are some of the, the things that you can do above that? You mentioned windmill. Beyond resorts. Okay, so let's let's take it in a different direction. I did mention windmills. So uh, if you've got wind farms around you, you can normally make three fifty to 400 bucks inspecting each windmill. And then... And there are some windmill farms out there for which I believe there are probably dozens, thousands, if not hundreds yeah, thousands. of windmills. Drive to West Texas and tell me what you think. Yeah. Or even so, on the way to California. Yeah. Near Palm Springs. Mm-hmm, another some, great one. Yeah. Even the way to on the way up to Colorado so where else when you see lots of wind farms and infrastructure what other things do you see um, I, I don't know what do you cell phone towers yeah cell pays phone another towers. 250 to 300 bucks a piece uh, and you can be inspecting those all the time you want to be thinking about your business what can I be setting up where I'm getting perpetual contracts where I'm getting right. recurring revenue it's coming in every week I'm doing something regular and that may sound boring to you but as a contractor or a freelancer that is the bread and butter of the business is the boring right. so yeah, absolutely it's kind of like investing when some of the people that I've learned about investing when I say investing I'm talking securities markets and so forth they said you want your investing to be boring because if it's too exciting, you're probably losing money and obviously it's exciting to make money, but you are going to be bored more often than not when you're just kind of slow and steady and and you're doing well. Gotcha. When are you going to write that book where it's the uh, legacy stock strategy for your kids? (laughs) Uh, Down the road. Gotcha. I'll be re- I'll be the first to buy the book. Okay, right. sounds good. Anyway, uh, guys, if you have a question related to drones, go to askdroneu.com. And if you're ready to become a boss, you want to fly like a boss, it's time to become part of thedroneu.com. Absolutely. And if you're looking for some study help for the 107 that you're about to take, check out our next class, which is going to be in Denver on October 8th and 9th, which is a Saturday and Sunday, a little different than our first one. We will be live streaming it. We'll have more information up on DroneUlive.com very soon. So again, if you want to go in person, you can meet us in Denver. You can attend via the live stream. Uh, if you become a member, yes, you can get the study guide, but you have to wait for the Part 107 class, which is developed out of these live streams, uh, to become available. A lot of people have been asking me how to clarify those three things. So there you go. Um, And soon you'll be able to buy just the 107 class and the study guide to get your certificate and get ready to go. Anyway, that's going to do it for us today, guys. Thanks again for listening. We really do appreciate it. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You.